to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Haley, for those of you who don't know me. And in today's video, I am back with another VSG post-op update. It has been a long time since I filmed an update, almost two months ago. There has been so much going on in my life. We had a lot of things going on, we moved. There has just been so much. So it has been a while since I filmed a video, but I am almost seven months post-op. I am in my sixth month of um, post-op and I am down 105 pounds. Yes, 100 pounds in six months. That was kind of insane. I am so happy and so proud of myself for hitting those goals. Um, there has definitely been lots of stalls along the way and it has been work. Um, there's so much more that goes into it rather than just eating small portions because I have a tiny tummy now. I exercise four to five times a week, twice a day. So Monday through Friday, usually Thursdays, I will take off and not work out. That's just because I have a lot of errands to do those days and I usually get my steps in anyway but I don't specifically set time to work out usually on Thursdays, but sometimes I do if I don't have a lot going on, but I will work out Monday through Friday, except for Thursdays usually. And yeah, I then in the evenings will walk a mile with my husband, with our dogs. So twice a day, four to five times a week. And that has been working for me. I am now down, like I said, 105 pounds. So what I'm doing is working. Um, I do notice that when I wasn't drinking and staying on top of my protein shakes that I was kind of stalling and not really um, losing as fast, which trust me at this point, I know I, if you are someone who is six months post-op or more, even less because even beforehand, you know how it is. You get so tired of protein shakes, so tired of them, but you really need them, they really work, it really helps with your macros, it helps you get your protein in, and that helps you lose weight. So, that's what I've been doing. I've just been trying to, uh, I guess, jump back on the protein shake wagon, and that has been helping me lose the last five pounds that I've lost, because I set at 100 pounds down for maybe like two and a half weeks, and I started drinking protein shakes again, and literally four days of that, and I have lost five pounds. So. That just goes to show you that was probably my issue. Um, now, as far as what else I eat, I am almost seven months post-op, so I can pretty much eat whatever I want. I did see my surgeon um, for my six-month follow-up. Everything is great, and I can pretty much eat whatever I want now. So I do eat a lot of like salads and a lot of low-carb wraps on low-carb tortillas. That's like my go-to. Um, I do still fast, not intentionally. That's just kind of how I am. I get up in the morning and exercise and kind of do my morning routine. And then by the time I get to eating or by the time I get hungry, it's usually around 11. So that's when I will usually eat. And some mornings I will make like eggs and bacon or eggs and sausage. And then some mornings I will have like a low carb wrap or a salad because it's close enough to lunch and I'm just not in the mood for breakfast food. But I eat a lot of stuff like that. And then for dinner, um, always try to eat my protein first, veggie, and then whatever carb we have on the side or starch we have on the side, I guess you could say. Um, like for instance, last night we had sliders on Hawaiian rolls. I don't know if anybody makes those. Had whole wheat Hawaiian rolls, and I know some people don't eat bread. I do in moderation, and I'm still losing weight, so I will probably continue to do that. Um, but I had whole wheat Hawaiian rolls and some ham and cheese and made sliders with them in the oven. And I had one slider and four tater tots. So that's about my portion size. I don't know if, um, all of you know exactly how big a Hawaiian roll is, but it's, you know, maybe like that big, it's tiny. And I had one of those and four tater tots. So that's like my portion for dinner usually. And that's not the healthiest dinner, but last night, for instance, was a easy, quick dinner. And that's honestly what I had. So um, a lot of times we will eat a lot of like air fried chicken or my husband has a flat top and we will have flat top chicken or flat top beef or steak. Um, steak is a little bit harder for me to eat. It's just hard to chew and it fills me up so quickly. 
So I eat a lot more chicken nowadays. It's funny because before surgery, I really wasn't someone who loved chicken. I, uh, I mean, I would eat it, but it wasn't my favorite. Beef was definitely my favorite, but now I eat a lot of chicken. I eat a lot of chicken. And I also, let me know in the comments down below if this has happened to anyone else who has had um, bariatric surgery, but I crave vegetables now. Whereas before, I always have eaten vegetables and fruit and stuff, but I mean, I literally crave vegetables and fruit like if I'm on Pinterest or something or I see a recipe on Facebook and it's got lots of veggies or fruit or whatever I mean sometimes my mouth will literally water <laughs> so I don't know if I uh, just need more vitamins which I do take my vitamins I'll be honest I have days where I forget but normally I would say six days out of the week I usually get all my vitamins in um but I do I crave veggies and I crave fruit so like I said I don't know if that's because of the vitamin thing, but I eat things with a lot more flavor now. And I also, that could be because I am eating smaller portions and you know, what I do eat, I want to be nutritious, but I literally do crave them, which is crazy because I didn't before. Also, I will say that water, I definitely still struggle. This has probably been my biggest struggle through this entire thing is getting my water in. I've never been dehydrated. I never have had to go to the hospital for fluids or anything like that, which is very common with people who have bariatric surgery. So I'm okay, but I definitely do not reach my 100 ounces or whatever it is that I'm supposed to be drinking. Uh, 64 to 100 ounces a day, I definitely don't hit that. I have a um, 30 ounce Yeti cup and some days I'm, lucky to get one of those down. So that's always something I'm trying to work on. I always wake up with the intention of drinking more water, but it just usually doesn't happen. Um, but I do feel like if I were to drink more water, I would feel better. So like I said, I do always wake up with the intention of drinking more water every day. It just sometimes doesn't happen. Another thing that has been kind of crazy is my hair loss. Month five and month six were crazy. I was losing so much hair. I could just run my fingers through my hair and it was coming out, it was falling out. Um, it has slowed down, I will say, I don't know if you can see, but if you see all these little frizzies, it's my hair growing back. So I'm glad that my hair is growing back, but the hair loss up until the almost seven month mark was a lot. It was crazy and it was hard and it was one of those things where I knew it was going to happen. It was something that I heard about multiple times before my surgery and it was something that I was okay with but when it's happening, when it's happening to you, when you're showering or brushing your hair and you know clumps of hair is falling out, it's really scary and it's really hard on your confidence, you know. It was something that I did struggle with for a while. It was I just felt horrible every time I went to take a shower or brush my hair because I was just so scared. But thankfully it has slowed down. Um, my At my six month appointment, my surgeon just said, keep taking your protein, keep taking your vitamins, you know? So that's what I've been doing. And my hair is growing back. It does still come out, um, I guess more so than it did before surgery, but it has definitely slowed down. So that's good. And if that is something that you are going through right now, just keep on going, girl, or boy, it will get better. I promise you, it will. Um, I'm also down four pant sizes. I started out in a size 24 jeans. I am now in a 18, and I can even fit into a 16. I went from a 3X in shirts and like stretchy pants or leggings to now I can wear an extra large or a 1X which just blows my mind and it has been so great to like go shopping and be able to find things. And it's also crazy because, because I will sometimes even not be able to find things small enough to fit me. Like if I go to a plus size store that I used to shop previously, sometimes I won't be able to find anything because everything's too big. And that is an amazing feeling as well. Um, I have been slowly getting rid of old things and replenishing my wardrobe. I shop at thrift stores a lot now um, just because like say I need something or I needed a pair of pants recently and so I went to the thrift store and I found a pair of jeans that I could wear 
And I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on them because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to lose that much more or how that's going to work. You know, I don't know how long I will be at a certain weight right now. So I've been shopping thrift stores. I don't know if that's your thing, but if it is, I highly suggest that if you are looking to kind of replenish your wardrobe. Um, and it was hard to get rid of my clothes that did not fit. I don't know why, but for some reason, going through my closet before we moved, I went through my closet and, you know, I just thought, okay, I'm not going to move the things that I don't need or can't wear. And I got rid of quite a bit of stuff, but it was hard for me. I put it off for a while. I didn't want to do it. I don't know why. It's not like I wear the clothes now or when I try them on. I don't like the way they look on me because they're too big, but it's hard. It's hard to get rid of those things. And part of me feels like, I don't know, like, hold on to them. You never know if you may need them, but I will never be that size again, or at least that's my plan. You hear people regain after VSG or gastric um, bypass and things like that. But I really think that's where the lifestyle change kind of comes in, you know? And the fact that I have stuck to exercising four to five days a week for six months blows my mind. I That is something I've never been able to do, ever. Um, I like to do a lot of, excuse my dogs, I like to do a lot of Leslie Sansone walking at home videos. Um, they're a little bit cheesy, and I think I've even mentioned these before in my previous update videos, but um, I still do those <laughs> religiously, and I love them, and they're a little bit cheesy, but they work for me. It's something that I have been able to commit to and stick to and that's not something that I've ever been able to do so I still do those and enjoy those I highly recommend checking out Leslie Sansone on YouTube you can just pull it up walking at home she has all different lengths of videos and I will sometimes add in my five pound weights and get a really good workout in um I also since we have moved we have a sidewalk in our neighborhood now we didn't in our old apartments but now where we live we have a sidewalk in our neighborhood and I um love to walk outside it has been beautiful here lately it has been in the 70s and cloudy and not too windy here in Oklahoma it gets very very windy and makes it feel a lot colder than it usually is but it hasn't been too windy lately and I have been walking in the morning Two laps around my block is a mile, so I have been doing that in the mornings, and then in the evening, me and my husband will walk the dogs two laps. So, try to walk around two miles a day, burn around 300 calories a day, and keep my portions about 1,000 calories or less. Usually, I'm more at like 800, 900, um, but then again, there's times we've had birthdays and even over like the holidays. I definitely ate sweets, I ate bread, I still eat bread in moderation, but I still eat bread, um, but like sweets and cakes and cupcakes and things like that, sugar does not make me sick, I don't get dumping syndrome or anything like that, so in a way that's kind of a bummer, but also I've got to teach myself the, and teach myself willpower and have uh, the willpower to not you know, binge on chocolate because chocolate is something that I could probably sit and eat an entire thing of. But it's all about learning how to change my entire life, change my eating habits, change my exercising habits. And I am pretty damn proud of myself if I do say so myself. I've worked really hard the last six months and I have lost 105 pounds. And I know I've said that, but it's just crazy to me. But I am just... I'm just so happy with where I am. This tool has changed my life. It has made me look at my life in a completely different perspective. And it's really made me care about myself more. And I know that probably sounds crazy, but the better I treat myself, the better I want to treat myself. It's kind of like a snowball effect. And that's just how it is. The more weight I lose or the more I exercise, it makes me want to drink more water, make sure I'm on top of my vitamins, eat better. If I lose some more weight, it makes me want to eat better the following few days. Like it just, it's a snowball effect for me. And don't get me wrong, I've definitely had my moments where I've eaten way more than I should and made myself feel sick, you know, feel gross. I have, you know, eaten 
one too many sweets, you know, like if we're at a party or we're hanging out, you know, an event with family or whatever and there's sweets there, you know, eat a cupcake and then go back four hours later, eat another cupcake. Like I don't need two cupcakes in a day, but it's happened. I'm not gonna lie. I'm being totally real. I've had days where I've eaten two cupcakes and you know, all I can do is wake up the next day and try again. And you know, it's just, it's the fact of actually trying again the next day and not saying, oh, well, I'll wait till Monday or, oh, I'll wait until this happens or this. You have got to always try to do your best every morning. Wake up with the mindset that you want to do your best every morning. At least that's what I've been doing and it has helped me so much. And yeah, it's just been a really crazy journey. I know it's been a while since I have posted an update video. I am sorry about that. I know you guys have probably been waiting or some of you have been waiting. I've had some people message me in um, on Instagram and wonder where my update videos are. Life has just been so crazy for me. But hopefully I am at a point now where I can start doing more update videos and um just other content on my channel as well. Now that we've moved, I would love to do some cleaning content. I know this has absolutely nothing to do with my VSG update, but I say this to say I am ready to get back into the groove of my hobby, which is YouTube, and trying to really commit uh, to making time for it, even when things are crazy, because it is a great outlet for me, and I notice that when I am consistently posting content or uploading videos. It also very much helps me stay accountable. I also want to post more what I eat in a day type of videos. So if that is something that you're interested in, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. Um, like I said, I have had some people DM me on Instagram and wonder where I've been. And I am sorry for that. I appreciate every single one of you who has been worried about me or looking for me, looking for my videos. I appreciate that I have so many of you who care and so many of you who are interested in my journey and my story. So I appreciate all of you and I hope that you will stick around to see where my channel is headed. And that's really pretty much it for my update video. I am also going to try and start posting more on Instagram as well. So I will have my Instagram linked in the description box down below. And yeah, that's really it. Please subscribe to my channel if you are ready to see more videos like this. I would love to have you. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.